Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Ed, we're back from Heroes Con. Uh, first big convention in about three years for us. And uh, a lot of familiar faces and a lot of enthusiasm there. So figured we would go through and just show off a few of the things that I came home with. I came home with boxes of stuff from this show. So we weren't the only ones feeling that enthusiasm and eagerness to get out there. But before we dive into this Heroes recap, I want to mention a couple of things. First of all... Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. You guys know those little neighborhood library lending libraries that you see that kind of look like big mailboxes? Well, we're suggesting the last Saturday in July, if you're a creator and you have your box of comps, if you're a collector and you've got a bunch of doubles, put some of those comics in those local lending libraries. Let's create some new comic book readers by putting comic books where readers can find them. Uh, one of the latest ideas I had include a little printout of uh, where they can find more comics if they want it. This is just something I printed out that has our local library is really great for comics and a lot of good comic book stores in the Pittsburgh area. And of course, can't forget Cartoonist Kayfabe. Going to stuff this into the comics that we put in these lending libraries. So if somebody likes that comic book, it'll be easy for them to track down more of those. That is the last Saturday in July. Let's go uh, grow the comic book readership any way we can. And that seems like a good place to start. Also want to ask everybody watching to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Next to that subscribe button is a little bell icon. That's a notification icon. Hit that and you'll know whenever we post a new video. And if it's a comic that you need to add to your collection or it'll give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect, you'll be the first one out there looking for that issue. Uh, sometimes these issues go up in value or get hard to find. So you want to be the first one in line if you need to add that to your collection. And let these videos play through to the end. That allows YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with other comics fans who haven't found Cartoonist Kayfabe yet. It's how we grow the channel, and uh, we appreciate your help in that. It's, uh, it's been going well so far, so keep that up, and uh, thank you for that. And let's dive into some hero stuff. Uh, I'm going to start with some of these flat pieces. Heroes, it's a comic book show. You know, anybody unfamiliar with Heroes in Charlotte, they've been happening for 40 years now. Uh, Shelton and his crew put on a fantastic professional comic-loving show. Uh, it quickly became one of my favorites. We were thinking about it, Ed. I think we started in 2008 going to that show. Crazy so to think, man. Probably the most attended show on my resume. And um, met a lot of fans there. This is a piece from Steven Beezer. Did a couple of these. Did one that was Red Room versus Street Angel, one Street Angel versus Red Room. I think that one's still packed up in your art supplies, Ed. But a uh, pretty nice piece, as you can see, even screen tone applied to here. Always impressed by the quality of fans that we have in terms of being artists and makers. And a lot one of maker, more example. A lot of makers in the crowd. Absolutely. And a lot of makers behind uh, the tables who I recognize from, you know, the Cartoonist Kayfabe Instagram or just in the comment section here. Absolutely. Uh, this, is, this was a piece, John Bergen, who does, uh, let me pull it out while we're talking about it, does a book called Frog Boy. I found him online just following his art. It's very Mad Magazine inspired. There's a BMX artist that he pointed me at that used to do these, uh, oh man, it's totally going to slip my mind, this, this guy, but would do BMX strips. So it's kind of a cartoony style, but he did a rendering of the Four Horsemen and then gave it to uh, the dudes at High Spots who tracked down signatures for three of these Four Horsemen. Uh, pretty good way to open up the show with his newest comic and then a piece of art from him. Speaking of High Spots, this is a piece that was done by... Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, famously, we hear about him being uh, an artist, started out as an artist. He's very good. You yeah. know, sometimes you hear about somebody who likes to draw or whatever. Nah, eh, you know, not always professional quality. Lawler's amazing. And uh, again, these guys at High Spots do a lot of memorabilia and collectibles and getting some signatures on here. Never thought I would see a drawing of Tojo Yamamoto. <laughs> let alone own one. <laughs> and uh, another piece that those guys made up a little uh, couple couple things for us is this Memphis Heat. This is Great an documentary. amazing documentary on the uh, territory in Memphis and a history of that. And the nice thing with the DVD is a lot of extras, a lot of bonus interviews with some of these guys. So that was a pretty cool piece to bring home. Not something I was expecting. And Josh from High Spots, who gave us this, He's been volunteering. He's one of the volunteers at Heroes. I talk about it being a pro professional show. I think he's been volunteering there for many, many years. And uh, thank you for both that and for the wrestling gear. And then finally, this Misfit Lit screen print by Dan Klaus, signed by Dan Klaus. Found this from Dreamhaven Books out of uh, Minneapolis. The guy's stand was phenomenal. I think he's been in business for 40 plus years. 
and all kinds of like books that I out of print books that I haven't seen a lot of really cool art and prints so I was happy to pick this up I'm a big Dan Klaus fan I have some Dan Klaus posters this is the first screen print I've actually gotten from him so really nice deal on that from uh, from Dreamhaven all right, I'm just going to start running through these. Ed. If you have any thoughts on Heroes or anything, let me know. And uh, we both came home with boxes of this stuff. So it's kind of a combination of a few things that we pulled. Can't show everything. Right. Just we'd be here for two days. But I uh, did want to highlight a few of these things. Um, starting with this Superpowers mini comic collections. Yeah, we did. Uh, Tom, Tom and I did the Masters of the Universe mini comics. And the thesis was, were these the first comics that we saw? And that's a possibility. And so were the comics that would come packaged with the superpowers figures. Two two panels a page. We'll we'll do a bigger yeah, video on these. We're gonna dive into these, but uh they were too cool not to at least mention. Yeah. One of the nice things with these shows is so much stuff shows up that is just I don't know this exists, you know, and especially whether it's small press or somebody making things like those superpowers, this one got my eye because it is a uh, a faux wrestling zine. But it's completely constructed. You can see, I think that's uh, Arne Anderson here, but Ham Sanderson. It's a it's an Aptor Aptor zine. That's exactly what it is. Double Aptor. And I love some of the art in here. It's really nice. It's all the same artist that put this together. So he's doing art, he's doing writing, he's making up all of this content. And uh, talk about in the spirit of cartoonist kayfabe, that is right up my alley. This was a, another mini that I picked up, Blood Scar from Jason Horn. You may recognize that image on the cover because this is entirely made up of Rob Liefeld swipes. <laughs> Going to be a couple of Rob Liefeld references in this episode, but I thought I would uh, show this off. You know, he hand assembles these to get the card, the trading card in there, something uh, I'm sure a lot of people remember from some of those books in the early 90s, but just super fun and even fun with the advertising stuff. Uh, if it's, you, I, it's iconic. Yeah, if you want to pause and read the list of titles, you will. Uh, it'll be worth your while at home. This exact format, it would have been uh, Del Kio and Hulk right there. I remember, like, with my al allowance, like, every week I could get a new subscription. He does this one thing that I thought uh, I, I do want to call out. Uh, letters column, which I think is made up of true and fake letters from uh, some of his friends. But you recognize this art, right? Yeah, this rifts. was in a million things, but then he writes his own copy for the ads. I think that's really brilliant if you're doing this kind of a, a project. The game to play, man, is going through this and calling out like where these comics are from. Like, see, this was George W. Bridge. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so I think that's X Force One. I noticed some of that stuff before. Like, that's the game to play, dude. Yes. It's to try to find the panels. So I was delighted by that, as I'm sure everybody would expect. Uh, Letter or Ledger issue number one. This one. Guy came up to us at the end of the show and handed it's us... It's Steve Moses, man. He's, he's in the comments all the time, dude. He's, he's a full-on cafe, dude. Handed us this, and uh, it's all about this font that... He starts out with the monster comics of the late 50s and early 60s Marvel comics, but this font is around. We saw it in an EC cover uh, that we recently looked at. I believe this is what Ogden Whitney was doing, like in Herbie and some of those ACG romance comics. So this was a font that uh, was used quite a bit in that 50s, 60s windows in Marvel Comics, and he's kind of going through and tracing, you know, how this was used and uh, what the font is, where it comes from, right up my alley. Only comment I would have, David, is uh, I'm old, man. Make these pages a little bit bigger for my poor old eyes. But I love it, and apparently he's planning to do more of these things, so I'm looking forward to issue two. It's a good hunt. And I had messages, dude, I got home. Monday night, I had messages from people. Hey, did you guys see this? So uh, I do appreciate people pointing out these comics or, or zines that they think I might be into. Um, and I'm glad I got that one. I'd have been really mad if I missed it. So interesting bit about this one, the Hugh Marks. One is done completely digitally. This is all produced on his iPad. The other one done completely on paper and with some really nice layouts, uh, pretty thoughtful cartooning in both. But I thought that was pretty fun to consider, uh, you know, different tools that we use and being able to go back and forth between the two. Some wild drawing in this one. I ended up with a pile of zines. So thought I would just kind of like bundle a bunch of these things and show off. One of the interesting stories that came out is how many people came up to us and talked about being uh, excited to make stuff inspired by these videos. Never got sick of hearing that. But this zine maker, this... Um, Know Nothing Magazine, they started making these. They said they wanted to make zines before, and one of our videos got them over the hump. 
now they've made them for over three years monthly. That's so cool. So I absolutely love that. And uh, Zine Tone is this collection of like collages using various Zine Tones and production methods and a photocopier. So again, these Zine Makers, man, near and dear to my heart. This came from a retailer in Asheville, came up uh, a guy that I've talked to a few times, past times. At some point, I'm going to get to his store. I follow it online, and it looks amazing. But this is one of those like pre-ruled notebooks, very small little pocket notebook. Pretty fun on its own, but taken to a next level whenever you see there's a template that's included <laughs> in the back. You bust out the template, and then you can make your own word balloons, almost like uh, not French curves, but like the templates that we have, plastic templates that we do this. That's that's great. Love it. Finally made it to uh, a comic book store this weekend. Been too long, and I was able to pick up uh, Uncle Jeff's first two issues of the new Shaolin Cowboy. You know, we've seen previews of these things on screen, but uh, no substitute for print for oh, these yeah. things. And he just keeps getting better, more inventive, creative. It, it kind of kills me to see his develop ongoing development. Yeah. But yeah, was, it's an inspiration. I've been meaning to pick these up and finally had a chance to, so that worked out well. The best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. Red Room Trigger Warnings 1 through 4 is in stores now while supplies last. Every Red Room comic is self-contained story, so whatever issue your comic shop has is a great place to start. There's also Red Room, the Antisocial Network, collecting the first season of Red Room, available now wherever comics are bought and sold. Except for 28 countries where it is banned and about 10 comic shops where it's banned. But you can still request it. They can still get it for you. And you can pick up Hulk Grand Design by me. Two double-sized issues retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk in one coherent story. Featuring my art, writing, color, letters. Uh, the Grand Design treatment, so to speak. So pick these comics up wherever you buy comics and support Cartoonist Kayfabe. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Uh, the Wrestling Spectacular. A color... Uh, adult wrestling comic. Got a few wrestling comics this weekend. As you can imagine, a lot of wrestling talk, not just with high spots, but also with comic book makers. And uh, I'm all right with that. This is alien wrestling, if you hadn't guessed. Looks pretty nice, too. Has a really nice feeling. I assume this is a print on demand piece, but uh, boy, print on demand has just come a long ways. This was a standout to me. This was handed to us by um, Adrian. Uh, Adrian F. Anthony, and he described it as kind of like cable, but this postmodern Dadaist shit. And as I'm looking through it, you know, like it's a gimmick to do some cable art. That's not, I'm, I'm, I'm an easy mark for that. I start looking through it. Every page is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. It's really good. I've been reading this at night too, and I think that's where you get into some of the more surreal Dadaist elements. And I got to tell you, like, it just kind of blew my mind he had another comic i don't think i packed it to bring over but really impressed by his comics his cartooning his art there's that duo shade like a like a uh, digital faux duo shade that i think he does really effectively talked craft with him throughout the weekend a few times and um i mean that's a great page layout so really a cool piece there um, somebody I would recommend tracking down if that, you know, if any of these appeal to you, you should be able to find them. Just pause the screen and uh, and, and Google those. Uh, the Girl Scout Stone Ghost Collection. Jim Ma Food. It was great catching up with Ma Food. I mentioned nice to see all of these people that we haven't seen in forever. So it was really fun to uh, talk to Ma Food a little bit, see how he's doing catch up. And um, I think these are his best comics so far. Like, he's another guy that just keeps evolving and getting better and refining his craft. I like seeing, like, his lettering now being a part of these comics. Yeah, this TPB, I think, is is brand new. So yeah. run out and scoop it up. And we're going to have him on the show sooner than later to, uh, you know, we haven't done the proper shoot interview with him yet. Uh, the convention was so busy, uh, way busier than ever. It's clear that the channel has, has grown legs because from the... The second we got to the fest, the the convention center, I'm talking about an hour and a half before it even started. It was nonstop, and we didn't really have a chance to catch up. So we went down with the idea of like, let's go record seven videos. You know, like we'll we'll do we'll do, <laughs> we'll do interviews at night and stuff. After the end of the show, all I wanted to do was get dinner and go to sleep. Yeah, I had that same feeling, Ed. I don't know if that's us getting older, things getting busier. Getting back into practice with shows, man. Like, uh, that's fair, re too. Recharging the social battery, you know? Like, it's been three uh, years since I let those uh, those muscles atrophy. Uh, so, got to build up that, that 
strength again. Absolutely. Uh, this was a comic, like we met him, I think we met him whenever we did Heroes, the, uh, the event at the Heroes store before everything shut down. And uh, he had given us some comics then, continues to make comics. This one is uh, his best comic so far that I've seen, love all the lettering. But we were talking Fletcher Hanks oh, yeah. was a big part. And you can see it in these pages. And look at this thing, man. Really inventive stuff. You know, it's one thing to do homage to Fletcher Hanks. It's another thing to add your own language on top of it. So totally. that was a really fun uh, fun conversations there and a fan of uh, Silver Wolf comics. We spent some time talking about uh, early Tim Vigil and Silver Wolf. This was a surprise for me. Oh, so cool. This is uh, this guy showed up early in the weekend with some of his comics from Arrow Comics, which is very closely related to Caliber. Some of the Arrow books ended up at Caliber, uh, a company we talk about a lot in Michigan. And so got a chance to hear from, from somebody that was there. And uh, yeah, also to is see... It Jason, Jason Moore. Got a chance to talk to Jason, though, about some of his adventures there in the early days of uh, that Michigan comic scene, both at Caliber and Arrow. And some of the studios there with like Guy Davis's and James O'Barr, Vince Locke, these guys who were in that very first wave of Caliber. And um, man, this stuff's pretty sharp looking itself. He, yeah, he was there. He saw it all. And he, he said a lot of like he said that like when James O'Barr was bringing in pages for The Crow, he would do like three or four different versions of a lot of pages using different media. One pen and ink. One might be uh, like a wash. Another one would have, you know, uh, duotoad application stuff and would like crowd crowdsource information from the crew, like which pa which captures the best effect uh, of what I'm trying to convey, you know, this one or that one. So like th there's a lot of crow pages that we haven't seen, man. That's interesting. Or is that crow artist edition? Yeah. Fellas, put that together. Um, how about this for an interesting uh, artifact? This is like the pencil roughs. From, uh, from Jason Moore, so it was cool to get the actual comics that we could compare the finished piece with, and who knows, that may be a video that we get into at some point uh, in the future. And, you know, mentioned Guy Davis and Caliber, and uh, I guess it was Eric that, that brought this by? It was the editor of the series of Modern Masters. Yeah, from Tomorrow's, showed up to uh, answer some of our questions, or at least to give us this book that had some answers um, for the early days of Caliber. You see Baker Street, Guy Davis. So something we're going to need to pour through and uh, learn a little bit more about that history. But I love these books. I have a few of them. I did not have the Guy Davis one, but Modern Master seems like an apt title for a Guy Davis. So that was a pretty fun book to add to the box. <laughs> Here's an oddity for you talking Rob Liefeld. Man, this is like Rob Liefeld themed uh, collection of books. Now, I know Rob stop doing the show like he had an issue but did this first issue actually come out or is this a bootleg i think the first issue came out that that's my guess i think it that's all that, that probably made it okay so this is not a bootleg i don't think so i think it's just a limited edition cover um i could be wrong i i don't know the particulars but a very fun cover nonetheless by this guy that's the guy who gave it to us that's the guy who commissioned him and gave it to us runs a couple of shows uh so who knows? Maybe maybe we'll make an appearance at one of his shows. Runs a show in Alaska, of all places. So uh, I wouldn't mind visiting Alaska again. The Aurora Borealis. Uh, Schlepzig was set up around the corner from us. And uh, if you're part of the Cartoonist Kayfabe uh, fan base, you probably recognize this guy's name. Very active in the fan groups. Does a lot of work whenever you see like the Wizards and, and the Darker Image books. You might see some of his work there. Uh, met him first day set up, spent the weekend talking with him, talking shop, really like his art. And he told me this is actually offset printed, which real newsprint offset printed. Yes. Yeah. You know, like, like this is something that I store in my brain as a uh, True color, maybe something to follow up on. I think it just looks really great. It almost even looks like it's colored a little bit around the edge. You know, that, the that, patina. Uh, that great effect that, that newsprint goes through. Um, but very nice work and very fun speaking with him all weekend. Gave me a book on the way out that was a reproduction of his father was an artist. And it's a reproduction of some of his father's artwork of uh, World War II planes. And it was really nice. Chris Pitzer, the publisher of Ad House Books, my frequent collaborator, longtime publishing partner, uh, has closed down shop. And he made these limited zines, the, uh, the Ad House Books, like 20th anniversary zine. Um, was talking about this on social media before the show. I had to make sure I got one. I don't know if that shows up, but it's the embossed Ad House logo. 
Uh, anybody that follows Ad House knows Chris Pitzer's attention to detail and print production. You get the same thing whenever he's hand making a, uh, a zine here. Give some background on Ad House, some of their publications, publication lists. Oh man, a lot of photos. We saw Niagara Falls. <laughs> yeah, there I we remember are. that. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin McGurk from the Billy Ireland. So, yeah, um, just a really nice, and it's a flip book. So, Ad showing House off some of the uh, some of the merchandise and some of the history of this company. So. It was very nice to, uh, we did a panel with Chris Pitzer talking about the uh, the Ad House overview, if you will, and um, always good to catch up with him at shows. Ray Bradbury's Frost and Fire, graphic adaptation by Klaus Janssen. This is a DC, almost like that proto-graphic novel, Squarebound, kind of like the Marvel graphic novels. I was unfamiliar with this, but whenever I saw it, it was Klaus Janssen. I uh, figured that was a, a worth a pickup for me. And he's doing script, pencils, inks, and color in 1985. So relatively early Jansen doing everything. And the color is practical. This isn't mechanical, setting things up for mechanical separations. No, no. Like, like he's using dyes or something. Yeah, you can see it's uh, there's some wet media on wet media, blending colors together. That's a different look at Klaus Jansen art. Oh, yeah. So... Always fun to, to find the stuff that I didn't even know I was looking for before the show. Did not get much of a chance to be out and about. I think this was so a Sunday busy. morning, like uh, right before the doors opened. This was about the only shopping that I got to do. Things have changed, Jim. <laughs> they have indeed. There, there's no crate digging anymore with ease. It's true. And uh, this one, going to apologize to uh, to Don Simpson because I think my camera zoomed in too much to get this all in. But a new edition of Pictopia, the uh, famous Don Simpson, Alan Moore... Uh, um, collaboration and they put out this new edition it's beautiful it's oversized i don't know maybe 10 by 16 somewhere in that neighborhood and uh, don simpson pittsburgh's own was set up across from us saw him drawing all week saw a bunch of his original art floating through and uh was able to pick up this new edition of pictopia a really nice version um like a matte finish on the paper or an uncoated paper and i like the big oversize so this is a story we're going to cover at some point. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it was like totally of its time. Uh, there was um, Roger Rabbit was a was a novel before it was the yes. the cartoon, and it did that kind of revisionist or or a deconstruction of comics and and animated cartoons. There was that one novel super super. What the hell is it? Super Folks. Yes, Super from, Folks. From the 70s that did a deconstruction. Deconstru and this is like the first comic book deconstruction. Like before Watchmen, before right. Dark Knight, any of that stuff. This is the first dabble in that. And it's oft reprinted. I, I've, I've gotten at least three versions of it. There was like an Alan Moore reader book that reprints it. Anything Goes. And I'm sure I have it in one or two other places. And this is a nice addition because it gives a lot of background and context, you know, where it appeared first and uh, some of the stuff you're describing, Ed, covered in this uh, extra material. So pretty uh, pretty nice addition of this. Um, you can see Fanographics is the publisher of it. And uh, I don't, I, I think this is very new. So yeah. um, pick that up if you haven't seen Pictopia yet. And like I said, we're probably going to do a full episode on this story at some point. It's a very well-regarded story on the uh, Comics Journal's Top 100 list, all that good stuff. Um, but that kind of wraps it up, and uh, if I didn't cover your comics, I do apologize, but like I said, I came home with about two boxes full of these books. I think you did the same, Ed. It's uh, it's a lot to uh, to work through. I haven't read most of it yet, but what a show. You know, it's talk about, like, recharging the batteries. We often say that on this show. This is the battery recharge for me, because you see these people creating comics at every level, from mini comics to self-published and damn professional presentations it's uh it's incredible that's for sure it was a heck of a weekend uh shout outs to everybody who stopped by and said what's up uh shouts to shout and drum and the heroes aren't hard to find crew and uh if you're happy good, belated okay. birthday to carla yeah <laughs> <laughs> you good i am okay favors like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when new vids are available it's out there jimmy hulk grand design monster and madness is available in comic shops everywhere it's my retelling of the 60-year history of the incredible hulk in one coherent story i'm writing penciling lettering giving it the grand design treatment and you can follow me on patreon.com slash jim rug where you can see a lot more of my comics art and process download out of print zines and minis and uh thank you for that red room trigger warnings is out in stores right now red room the anti-social network 
uh, trade paperback is out there. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Uh, you can get these comics at my link tree in the description below this video because it is unfortunately banned in more than 28 countries and banned in more than 10 comic shops. Uh, you can read the comics today at my Patreon for three bucks. I have the archive up there. I put up new strips every Tuesday and that link is available in the link tree also. Cartoonist Kayfabe comic book Christmas in July is the last Saturday in July 2022. And what we're doing is dropping comics off in those free little uh, libraries that are in your local neighborhood, you know, at the at the street's edge on the sidewalk. Go take your doubles, go take your comp copies, drop, drop those around town, and let's see if we could uh, sow the seeds of uh, a future generation of comic readers this way. Man, the more people who do it, the more people who will see it, and that can't be a bad thing for comics. What else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the KFAB channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Make more comics.